If Polar Explorer Craig Matheson became Chancellor of the Exchequer, he would throw all the accountants who set up offshore tax havens into prison and chuck away the team. Matheson, who worked as an accountant before he became a full-time explorer, thinks those experts who help individuals and businesses move money offshore to avoid paying UK tax should face criminal charges. The former anti-fraud officer for Revenue and Customs and ex-Royal Navy seaman has led explorations to both poles and is currently explorer in residence with the Royal Scottish Geographical Society. His biggest luxury on an expedition is a fly fishing rod, which he recently used in Greenland to catch a 50-pound fish, despite being ridiculed for bringing his fishing kit by the local Inuits. He has set up a charity, the Polar Academy, to inspire young adults to fulfill their potential by taking them on Arctic expeditions. He says the North Pole is the best place in the world to go if you want to forget all your money worries. What did your parents teach you about money that wealth is about contentment and happiness? My father was a farm laborer, while mother kept the house and looked after us kids. Money was one of those things other people had got we did not go short of anything though. We never went on holiday or well, had new cars, but we never missed that stuff. We did not worry about money. We were happy. We lived out in the country on the edge of the Trossiches and the Highlands, and I had a lot of freedom. I used to camp out in the wilderness in isolated places. I grew up needing nothing. As long as I had a fishing rod, I was happy. What was the first paid work you ever did putting the tops on to milk bottles when I was seven to help my dad out on the farm? I did it every night for a couple of years and I think my dad paid me 5 or 10 pence for 2 or 3 hours work which I would save up in a little pot. But once, when my dad needed money for fuel, he emptied the pot. Doc, there was nothing wrong with that, he did it because he needed the money. That is the way it was. Have you ever struggled to make ends meet? No doubt I have never been in a position to have much in the way of savings. What comes in goes out. The UTI did not consider that to be struggling. I left school at 16 and immediately enrolled in the Royal Navy. For the first year, I did not know my pay. I just knew I had enough to get by. The first Gulf conflict was kicking off at the time, so I did not spend much time in the UK. I know some people charge an absolute arm and a leg to give a speech at a corporate event.
The most I have ever charged is £2,000 for an hour's talk at event.if I am speaking to a charity, I rarely charge anything. I do not get paid when I go on expeditions. What has been the most lucrative year of your life? It was 2012, when I was working as an accountant in Glasgow and earning more than £100,000. I hated every minute of it. I jacked it in the following year to become a full time explorer and set up my own charity, the Polar Academy. Now I go round schools in Scotland looking for kids who have shut down, youngsters who believe that achieving something significant is for other people to do. I recruit those kids and train them to go with me on polar expeditions, funded by donations to the Polar Academy. What is the most expensive thing you have ever bought yourself for fun? It was a 1962 Fender Stratocaster electric guitar for £2,700. It was a bargain that I play it every day, blues, rock and sometimes my own stuff. What is the biggest money mistake you have ever made buying a Ford Fiesta on higher purchase for £10,000? I only did about 4,000 miles a year, it just sat outside, so I eventually got rid of it. Maybe, it would have been cheaper to just go by taxi. Deal you saved into a pension or invest in the stock market? No. I used to save into a pension. I started when I was 16 with a military pension and I have a civil service pension because at one point I worked as an anti fraud officer at Revenue and Customs. I have also just paid off the mortgage. What is the one luxury you like to treat yourself to when I am exploring? A fly fishing kit. That is a real luxury on an expedition. The Inuits have a good laugh at me when they see I have brought it. But we can catch fish weighing up to 50 pounds on that fly rod. If you were Chancellor of the Exchequer, what is the first thing you would do? I would make it a criminal offense for accountants to set up offshore tax havens for individuals and companies. If a normal person on the street does not pay their tax bill, that is a criminal offense. It should be exactly the same for wealthier individuals and companies such as Google and Amazon. What is more, the accountants who help people and businesses avoid paying UK tax by moving money offshore should be prosecuted as accessories to criminal activity and put behind bars.
But when you are on an expedition, you have a tent, stove, some food and a sledge. That is all that matters in the world. As long as you have got those few possessions, you are usually absolutely fine. That puts everything in perspective. It makes you realize you do not need much to be content in life. This year, we will travel to a part of the east coast of Greenland that has never been explored before. Every mountain and ski pass is unnamed, every valley they cross has no title. The kids do everything themselves, they pull their own sledges, do all their own navigation and cook their own food. <laughs>